there's been a lot happening in the world for me and you know it it does feel like a rather tumultuous time and so to have a platform where we can come together and really share ourselves authentically from the heart um, to the entire world just feels absolutely amazing to me to be able to see other people sharing themselves fully vulnerably from the heart is one way that I have learned to see myself. And so just again, thank you. And thank you, Kimberly, for everything you shared earlier. And that actually feels like a fairly decent jumping off point um, because one of the things that I feel like is really worth diving into is the how, the how you got to that point. And um, I'd love to sit down and talk later, either on another episode here or just separately uh, about how you got to where you are. And that's where I'd like to start my share. Like, just, yes, like I I resonate with both of you in that, that there were so many moments growing up that I felt like I didn't belong, that I didn't fit in, um, that I was alienated or weird or not accepted or whatever. And that really got me to a place where I shut down internally. Like I would not speak up, I would not share, I would not say what was really coming up for me. Um, I'd often just walk away. And that led to this really miserable existence for me. Um, you know, this, this really deep depression for a long, long time. And it's only been through this incredible journey over the last 10 years, roughly, of my life that I've kind of come back to being able to feel again, being able to love myself again, being able to love others again. And I'll, I don't want to take up too much time. I'd like to actually leave a little time for some Q and A after if, if there's, if it's a, if it's a possibility. Um, but I'll just start, in 2010, because in a lot of ways, that's where I felt like my life actually began. Um, 2010, I'm living in Nashville. I'm absolutely miserable. I am at this job that doesn't feel good to me. There's no real meaning there for me. Um, it's just a paycheck. It's just a way to survive. And at the time, I am absolutely convinced that I have to have this job, because if I don't, I won't get money. And at the time, I truly believed that that was the only way I could survive. Having money. And so on a whim, literally on a whim, and with it with about a week's notice, uh, my best friend and I at the time basically gave up everything in our lives and moved to Hawaii. Like that's how miserable I was. And I was, I was willing to literally jump ship and leave everything I knew um, for a place I had never been. I didn't really know anything about Hawaii, uh, but it was, it turned out to be one of the best, best decisions that ever happened to me. You know, from that point on, everything shifted and there's one more important thing to note about this that i moved to hawaii basically an atheist like i was full-on naturalist there is no god there is no divine there is nothing you know outside the natural realm and this all of this has a logical explanation it's the big bang theory it's blah 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 blah, blah. Um, and after about two years of living on Hawaii and having what I can only describe as magic thrown in my face almost every single day, I kind of had to start questioning that. And 
that questioning of course led to more questioning and it led to this place of uncertainty well, what do i know do i actually know anything and the more i kind of fell down that path the more i realized that no i don't know anything and i can't know anything and knowing things was the only way i knew how to operate like that was the only way I knew how to make sense of this world was by understanding this world and having some sort of logical sense to it. And when that was taken away, I didn't know what to fall back onto. And that kind of served the next phase of, of this journey of self discovery and that was when I met a really good friend of mine uh, who I have um, actually, we, I, I live with part time up in Canada at this, at this little farm, him and his wife and a few other people in this community. Um, but he was the one who introduced me to the concept of the higher self, the intuition and something that uh, just a little disclaimer with all this, I don't believe anything and i'm not asking anyone else to believe anything there's this saying in statistics all models are wrong but some models are useful the way i choose to look at this is these concepts that i'm about to, to explain they're just models and they may or may not reflect reality but i find some of them useful in being here in this body in this world and so yeah, bruce this friend who i met on on Kauai, uh he was the one who introduced me to the concept of the higher self and intuition and um that struck a chord with me like there was something in me that I could feel and it was a it was a physical sensation at the time like it was it was literally a feeling in the heart in in here. And um, and so I, I jumped on board and I, I went all in and, and ended up going down this path of shamanism and a few other isms and discovered what I think of now as intuition. And I say that in that specific way because what I think of as intuition doesn't seem to line up with what scientists talk about when they talk about intuition. For me, intuition is this deeper sense of knowing that comes from whatever it is that is bigger than myself. You know, some people call it God, some people call it love, some people call it the divine, some people call it the universe. I don't have a name for it and I don't feel like a name is important. It's just that that is bigger than me. And the more I learned to check in with that before committing to anything, before taking action, before anything, the easier my life became, the more joyful my life became. Um, the more I stepped out of this depression and into this beautiful, easy flowing life. And it's not perfect. You know, something that some really wonderful person whose name I can't remember right now said at one point was, how do you know you still have more work to do? You're still breathing. And I, I resonate with that. I, I, I really feel that. So I'm easy on myself when I catch my mind stepping back in and trying to figure things out and trying to choose a direction or choose the next step or make a plan to go forward. Um, and I follow that. Like when I follow that logical fear direction that my mind wants to happen, I start getting more depressed. 
and then as I realize that's happening, I step back and I, I kind of check in here again and move back in this direction. And that's really what has led me here today to this. Um, you know, I had no intention of going to Landmark, which is how I met Abram. Uh, and my mind didn't even want to go, but my heart said yes, my intuition said yes. And so I went. And again, another wonderful, wonderful, wonderful choice because here I am. And that set up the situation that led me to here. It, here. And so I really resonate with everything that's happening with all of this. And Abram and I, Abram and I have spent quite a bit of time just playing with this concept and talking about it and exploring ourselves together. And I just thank, thank you for inviting me here today. I really appreciate it. And I love you guys. And I actually, I feel like that's, that's pretty much all for me for today. 